Final Fantasy 16, Chris. This is one of the games that I am absolutely the most like excited for. And it is in the release month that it comes out. June 22nd. Uh, because of the legend of Fido, uh, who's hanging out and chat with us, uh, and many others, uh, I have a PS5. And I'm going to be playing it. However, if you go out beyond the fandom uh, and you go into the internet realm for a single player game, this game is already stirring up an insane amount of both people, you know, defending it, you know, fervently and attacking it fervently for a, uh, a wide range of reasons. And so, like, I'd like to get your perspective. I want to talk to you about the drama is that there's a couple of things that people are hitting the game for, which I think there is a valid level of criticism when you're talking about the game only coming to PS5, where people are like, oh man, I'd love to play it, but I don't have a PS5. I wish it was on PC. Valid. I agree with that. I agree with that take I don't 100%. I like third party exclusives. So like, even right. if I had a PS5, I don't feel good about that. Right, right. Like, I just don't like them as a concept. Right. But now you take that you, you, you level the console war right on top of it and it's fuel for rooting for the game to fail, right? Like it's it's fuel for this sucks, Yoshi P sucks. This should be a turn-based game. Uh, and we've seen like big figure, uh, bigger heads like, like Jez uh, who uh, works and writes for like Windows Central talking about how uh, nobody asked for Final Fantasy May Cry, which is the riff on the fact that the Devil May Cry combat director is on top of this. And that's why, and so there was a news report rumor report that the pre-orders for final fantasy 16 are lower than expected so i'm going to just give you that bit of information and then i'm gonna let you riff because then i got more you know thoughts to kind of add on to that this is square enix like everything that they ever announce has Tears been of the kingdom for... set a guinness world record that was previously held by them for 10 million units sold in the first three days they already had the record it was like mario odyssey or something so they took it from themselves. Mm -hmm. So I assume Square Enix is like, we're going to do 11 million. Like I assume they just had <laughs> no basis in reality because yeah. the bean counters over at Square Enix, for many good reasons, are disconnected from the people who, who actually make games. And that, that does a lot of good things for us gamers. We don't want those two being closer together. But what it does mean is the projections are always bad. They're always bad. It's like, well, we sold a record number. That was really disappointing. Every yeah, time. It's ridiculous. They're like, I can't, you know, and, and I think they get that because they look at Nintendo and like Nintendo sold Breath of the Wild faster than there were Switches. At one point, Nintendo had more Breath of the Wild copies sold than there were Switches made. And they're like, well, we should be able to do that. Okay, but you guys only make a game every once in a while in a non-cohesive universe across a variety of genre and style types. Sometimes it's turn-based, sometimes it's not. Like, you don't have a, a cohesive fan base that's ready to blindly the next zelda game they could offer pre-orders right now like ash yeah. is a creation style 500 they could star citizen they could be a thousand dollars a piece and they would sell copies to the next one because yeah. we know what it's going to be because breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom feel it feels like an iteration on the same game yeah that's not what 16 is it's unrelated to 15 it'll be it's unrelated to game. 17 it's a yeah. whole different game so I don't. See, you make don't know the what you make the reasonable are. argument, right? You make you, you're making the Final Fantasy fan who's like, yeah, every Final Fantasy game is should be its own thing, and that brings into question the concept of like, well, are they really numbered? And turns out that a lot of the uh, media reported on Yoshi P thing and like, yeah, we might get rid of the numbers and like that. Then you actually go look what he said. And he's like, no, he said that we had a discussion about it. And then they're like, oh, running with it. Yoshi P is thinking about dropping numbers. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh man, people just like uh, hanging on any little crumb to get any kind of headline out there. Um, but uh, each founder, like in uh, Flounder in chat says, they didn't pre-order uh, Tears of the Kingdom, bought it on a release day. That in and of itself is exactly right with Captain or uh, Tyler saying, uh, the pre-order is dumb because the same thing happens with God of War in 2018. They reported that, oh no, not looking good. Pre-orders aren't good. We live in a world of like no scarcity, right? To the point where like some companies were like, how can we make this digital scarcity called an NFT? And thank goodness, like Square Enix, at least in the some avenues, hasn't embraced that. And I haven't seen their non, the, the protected avenues actually like release. They talked about it. it anyway, like we don't need to, to rehash that. A week, two weeks ago, I knew yeah. I wanted to play D4 on launch. I pre-ordered it this morning, the day I was ready to install. Yeah. 
Why would I, what benefit do I have for giving them my money sooner? I still got all the pre-order bonuses right. because I did it before there's six hours and 16 minutes until those go away. There you go. Like, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yep. Um, you had the so opportunity to look at reviews. You had the opportunity to talk and see uh, friends and play and, and your if risk storm is- storm had hit and my computer had been ruined from water damage, I wouldn't have bought the game, but not because anything the Diablo devs did. <laughs> like, yeah. so like why park any risk with them? They don't give me anything extra. It has a lower interest rate than my checking account, which is already insulting. Yeah. Like it doesn't, I don't understand when they're like, well, you didn't pre-order it 18 years in advance. Well, what do I get? Well, you get it at the same price as launch day. Why okay. would I give you the money? Right. Same thing. That's the, that's the same concept with the ashes. It's like, I I think the pre-order kind of game ends up hurting the expectations, right? Like there's a, there's a, there's a real conversation we can have about price. You and I have kind of hashed it out price, no matter what, despite the fact that we pay less for games today, like in terms of inflation and how all that functions, it still has this mindset of setting this arbitrary, like, oh, it's because it's $70, I expect even more. And it's these expectations that gamers have that tend to run afoul of the game itself. But beyond $70, we all know that game prices drop. And so honestly, I think more or less when somebody's like really like, mad about the price of a game being $70 even if it's in a beloved you know franchise that they trust etc like at some point like you got to have a level of personal responsibility when it comes to your money and your expectations especially when it comes to a game that is you know like that we that you know outside of Nintendo Nintendo Tears of the Kingdom ain't gonna get any cheaper but outside of that exception, like we know that these games, as prices are going to drop. And so you just have to learn to kind of say like, all right, if I'm, if I'm concerned about it, maybe I'm not going to like that combat system. Maybe I'm not going to feel the, the M rating, I mean, you know, like maybe I want to play this around my kids or something like that. Well, play the demo, right? Like, and before you pre-order, there is a demo that is like, it's the worst kept secret. I don't know if Yoshi P said he was releasing a demo, but it's, he did. I think it's the 11th, <laughs> like that it's coming he out. Did. Good, he good. said he wanted people to go hands on. Yeah, and so to be able to experience it for yourself and then make it a financial decision. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like I think he did, but I didn't want to like mischaracterize it and be like, oh yeah, Yoshi P said this, and it's like then I'm just doing exactly what everybody else in the uh, online reporting no, he, space. It, I, I don't understand. I, I'm also seeing people getting really upset that it's not the game they wanted, as if that insults others. Mm -hmm. I understand that we don't get Final Fantasy games annually, but since they're not sequential, like I don't feel as hurt from Final Fantasy 16 sequentially as I would like, like a bad Star Wars movie, that's canon. Mm -hmm. uh, a bad Marvel movie, that's canon. Yeah. And so like a bad DC movie, that's a fourth take on the origin story. Uh, and so like, I can see being upset about like, how do I rationalize this with the other ones? But the Final Fantasies aren't that way. They are are totally freestanding things, mm -hmm. um, and they're known to jump genres. So it's not like a Zelda game comes out and it's still Zelda and it's still Link and it's still Ganon, but now it's turn based. That would be a big change. And there have been other uses of the Zelda IP, but a core Zelda game has always been relatively on formula. That's yeah. not true of Final Fantasy. For as long as there have been Final Fantasy games, they have messed with combat system. They have messed yeah. with game length. They have they messed to. with storytelling methods. So even when we see characters jump from one game to another, it's not always portrayed the same way. So there's not like a universal set of rules. It's not like they're operating on the same planet or the same time frame. So like I just then they don't need to then they need to be it. free. They need to be free to be able to experiment. One of the things that I was growing frustrated with some of the arguments, it's not a turn-based combat system. Like turn-based isn't the defining factor of what makes it a Final Is Fantasy that a new game. Complaint because we've known that for like we've known that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, like well, well uh, now again, like it's like anybody's looking kind of for fuel to take their angle. And there's a couple of uh, things that I think are at play. We've seen this kind of happen. It's like where people are overly negative about something for that attention because negative, you know, viewpoints. Things must be getting better, man. I think honestly, things I, are I, must be getting better. COVID must have blown by because the other day yeah. I saw people getting mad at Chick Fil A about some change to policy on their website from 2015 and i was like if the worst thing you can dig up is from 2015 we are doing all right we're like, doing we're it. doing we're okay. making it 
Well, Don't you know, text us you're right so now. We right. have more recent things, but everybody else is doing great. We are actively looking for something to be mad at. I tweeted out, I was like, man, imagine if I had the time to be pissed about like nothing that really I found matters. I a tweet of somebody 6,500 tweets ago. I have a link to it because you're not going to be able to find it because it's quite a bit of digging. But wait till you hear. Just wait. I, <laughs> oh my gosh. So cool. I think there's that aspect of it. Like I, to kind of, you know, build off of it, it says here. Uh, the only reason they pre-ordered was because uh, they wanted the collector's edition. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I stated when Yoshi P took over Final Fantasy 11 and really, I uh, 14, and was really kind of bringing it back, people were like, oh my gosh, he's going to save Square Enix. And I was like, just wait till Final Fantasy 16. They're like, but 15's next. I go, he hasn't had that time to truly impact 15's development. I think some of it was, but wait till 16. 16 will be a real testament to his leadership and management style. And that's, well, I, I expect that. I expect to have a complete game. It doesn't mean it's gonna be my favorite Final Fantasy. It doesn't mean I'm not going to, after the fact, say, you know what, here's what I liked. Here's what I thought they could be better. How do I feel about the combat system being action? Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna go hands on. I'm gonna form my opinion that way. But it seems like a lot of people are looking for a reason to, to be mad. And I say to this, a couple of weeks ago, I go, why does it feel like this is the best year we've had in gaming in a long time? And it's the worst year for just, people are just pissed about like anything. And so I do feel Final Fantasy 16 will have a review bomb scheduled due to its nature of its PS5 exclusivity, which let's be honest, I was talking, uh, I was talking with Mike about this uh, in, in the comment section, which we'll probably dive into some y'all's comments here in a bit. But I was like, you know, honestly, I think one of the things that does, I, I will be i will give a point to the game not being on like a playstation 4 is that square enix's reluctance to embrace or or have a streaming option i don't think the game should be coded for ps4 but we do know that you can stream games and i think it would have been an interesting option to have hey play it on ps4 with streaming and that's a that's a complaint you've heard me make numerous times with square enix's reluctance for geforce now etc because not everybody has a ps5 and so to sit here Blizzard, and say that the, the, the pre-order like streaming they don't like streaming their games nintendo has, has blizzard has has, has the kingdom like, locked down even turns. though it's, it's yeah. out there circulating as an emulator they're upset about like they, they these they want to lock their ip down yeah. blizzard has terms that says like you can't like stream this and they don't they've never caught us but it's like i right. hear it runs well in geforce now i hear I hear That's it runs great on Shadow PC. Like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but it's like, you know, so it's, that's one of the things I see, you know, happening with it. And then like uh, Nevi Link saying, yeah, go play Octopath. Like for the square, like I think the core so good. Octopath, Bravery Default, I think what I want to see from this, especially within Square, what I want to see with 16, whether they decide to make a 16-2 or, or whatever their path is forward, I hope that the next Final Fantasy numbered release isn't five, six years away. Because one of the things that I think that that is a fair critique is that if this isn't your kind of thing that you're looking forward to, you love Final Fantasy, but you're just like, you know what? I really like the techno. I really like this. That gap in time between mainline Final Fantasies has gone so big that even if like in the past on the PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Oh, there was another one around the corner. In fact, you already knew of the next one when you were getting ready to buy the current one. You're like, okay, yeah. you know. So even if this doesn't satisfy, I know that there's something right around the corner. And I hope that whether they take this engine and they like, yep, this is the future. This combat system is what we're going to, we're going to use and refine for the next couple of years that we can see some more, you know, fast paced, uh, you know, releases so that like people can kind of be excited about not necessarily an annual Final Fantasy, but I don't know. I think every three years would be really kind of cool, you know, um, how how that plays out. And now there's also rumors that we're going to hear about the next Final Fantasy VII, you know, rebirth, you know, uh, kind of game, which will hopefully get people excited. Masters have been well received. It's oh, like dude, you can do great. a lot of other things. Those are so um, good. So, well, again, I, like Octopath Traveler bringing in Bravery to Fall. And so like, oh, you want a turn-based combat system? Here's that, you know, that that iteration in that path. Even Yoshi P saying like, you know what? If we do want to go back to kind of a pixeled Final Fantasy, like that'd be kind of neat. Like, yeah, like that would be kind of cool. I think people could be excited about that. I think that's and what it the Octopath cost them. team was built for. Yeah, exactly. 
That's what I mean. Octopath feels like a Final Fantasy game. It is a different name, but it feels yeah. like a Final Fantasy. Game. Yeah, so, some of the stuff is different within it, and honestly, I wouldn't mind if they decide to go and make a branded Final Fantasy, sure. you know, pixel 2D, like, but releasing it just like they did with the pixel remasters. Like, hey, here's a new Final Fantasy telling the story. Turns out by making those games that, you know, if people would purchase them, we can actually turn those out pretty, pretty regularly. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, like the, the cost on, on doing that versus 17 would be, would be substantial. What's the gap between Octopath 1 and 2? Uh, two years. That was fast. Yeah. That was fast. I was and like, I, it didn't feel even long. if I'm off by a year, like no more, it wasn't more than three. It, it, it was, felt fast. Yeah, it felt fast. Because I only yeah. play my Switch when I'm traveling and I was like, I'm not done with the first one. Yeah.